today we are going to test out a recipe for chocolate. And when you see a recipe for chocolate in the 1700s or the beginning of the 1800s, it's usually going to be for chocolate that you drink. That's the most common way you have chocolate in that time. And it might frequently be for breakfast, which is a terrific idea, which is why we should definitely test out this recipe that Maria Eliza Rundell wrote down for us in 1805. Now the very first thing in the recipe is to cut the cake of chocolate in very small bits. Now, chocolate cake, that sounds like something we have, right? We know what that looks like, but in 1805, it's not the thing that you put frosting on and candles in. It's different. It's a pressed piece of um, something that's been made ahead of time and put in your pantry just so you have it all ready when you're ready to make your chocolate drink. And what's in it? Well, fortunately, Hannah Glass wrote that down for us in the Herbert cookbook in the 1700s. You make it by grinding up your roasted cocoa beans with things like pistachios and almonds and cinnamon and nutmeg, so much nutmeg. They so love nutmeg in the 1700s. And all of these things get ground together and pressed into something that will be set in a warm, dry place so that then your homemaker has pressed cakes of chocolate that already has all those, those ingredients in it. Now, where can I get pressed cakes of chocolate like that today? Well, it just so happens that the thing that we can buy as Mexican chocolate bars, they're not bars you would eat because it's something that you make chocolate with the same way they did in the 1800s, actually in the 1700s. So I'm going to use that today because they are using the same kind of spices that our cooks really liked to see in their chocolate in the 18th century. Those who use much of this article will find the following mode of preparing it both useful and economical. Cut the cake of chocolate in very small bits, put in a pint of water, and when it boils, put in the above. Mill it off the fire until quite melted, and then on a gentle fire until it boil. Pour into a basin, and it will keep in a cool place eight to ten days or more. When wanted, put a spoonful or two into milk. Boil it with sugar and mill it well. This, if not made thick, is a very good breakfast or supper. So the first thing I need to do is chop up our cake of chocolate very finely. Then I'm going to put it into boiling water. Then when I take it off the fire, it says to mill it. Now what does that mean to mill it? Well, if you are making chocolate in the 1700s, you would have a milling stick that would be round and you could rub it between your hands. This one's not round, so it's not working. And it would go like this. And um, I don't have one. So I'm going to use this to mill it. Then it's just to keep it moving. It's to keep it from burning to the pot. Um, and then I will have essentially chocolate concentrate liquid is what I've made. And the next step that I'm gonna need to do when I'm ready to drink it is to add that to some milk and boil that, and I might do it in a chocolate pot. I might do it in either an earthenware or a copper chocolate pot, and it might look something like this, except a proper one will have a hole in the top for me to put that mill so that I can keep it mixing. I can keep it going like that and keep it mixing, just like if you were making chocolate on your stove at home. And you can make this chocolate on your stove at home. Okay, now her instructions say we are going to add this to a pint of water that is, and then we're going to boil it. So I've already heated up some water. Now normally in a hearth I would have a nice little trivet to put this on, but guess what? I don't have access to those right now. So I've just made a pile of coals right here. Here's our little chopped up chocolate. Chopped up chocolate right into the hot water. You can see it's steaming a little, and it says it wants me to melt it off the fire. So I'm going to melt it off the fire, melting it. And you'll notice in my fire, I have 
let it burn down so I have all these beautiful glowing coals. The coals are what I really want to cook with. All these pretty glowing coals are the slow heat that will let me boil this back up again while I'm stealing it. So now I feel like it's probably melted. Probably. This is going to be hot, so I'm going to hold my leather pot holder. And I'm just going to put it right on the coals because I don't have my trivet. It's warm over here, kind of close to the fire. And I learned last time I made this, I let too much heat escape. So I'm going to close that and let it get nice and hot again. I want it to get boiling. Um, and when I get that boiled down a little bit, I'm basically going to wind up with chocolate and water. Some 18th century recipes just have you have the chocolate and water. They don't have you add milk. Uh, Maria has us adding it to milk. A lot of recipes do. There's another recipe where you can make chocolate cream and you can add some egg yolks and some thick cream and just stir it, let it heat simmer slowly until it thickens. And then you can eat that with a spoon in all its deliciousness. So they had lots of different chocolate recipes. We're just using Maria's today as an example, as a test. Um, I admit, I haven't used Maria's before. I made chocolate cream last time. All right, let's see if this is heating on my coals. I love that steam. Oh, it's, it, it looks like chocolate milk. I mean, there's no milk in here yet, but it smells like chocolatey goodness. I wonder if that's boiled enough to add to some milk. So what it wants us to do now when we're ready to make some is to add a little of this to our milk. So let's do that in our chocolate pot. So that's our, basically our chocolate concentrate. And now if we want to drink it, we are supposed to add it to milk. So I have put some milk into my pretty copper pot here. And we're going to need to boil that. So I'm going to need more of these beautiful coals. Just keep bringing them on. Those look nice and hot. Those look nice and hot. Okay, and I'm gonna need to add them in. Now, if I had been clever, I would have brought something to make pouring this in here much easier, but instead I was not clever, so let's see how much of a mess I make. Ready? On your mark, get set. This is carefully measured, folks. Yep, that was definitely, that's more in there. Is that the right amount? Who knows? And then I want to mill it a little. See, swish, 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 back and forth. Doesn't look very chocolatey to me. I want more chocolate. I think I overfilled it. But we're going to put this right in my... We want that to get nice and warm. Again, that should be on a trivet. If I were in a historical site, I would probably have a very pretty trivet ready for that. So as far as how long this takes, I have completely lost track of how long it's been. Um, but this is actually a pretty quick recipe. And I'm making it more slowly today than normal because we are stopping to make sure that we can show you on the camera what I'm doing every few minutes. But normally I think this is an under an hour. That includes all the letting it boil and all the letting it simmer. But the trick is you need your fire started enough ahead of time, like an hour or two ahead of time, so that you have coals instead of flames because they want a gentle boil. And you're not going to get a gentle boil out of uh, flames. You're going to get a singe <laughs> out of flames. So we want those pretty glowing coals. Um, and again, normally under your trivet, but you know, without a trivet, what's really important is that we can still have chocolate. 
And those are our priorities, of course, in any era. Let's see if this is getting warm. I hope. Let's make sure I should be milling this. Um, now it says I can add sugar at this point to taste. Um, there was some sugar already in the chocolate that we cut up, so I'm not sure what the flavor is going to be there before I add the sugar. Also overfilled this a little. <laughs> These things happen. Now I'm not seeing, I kind of guessed ratios here, and I, yep, that looks great. Um, I kind of guessed ratios here, and I'm not seeing it chocolatey as I would like, so I admit we took the rest of it and put milk in that, and that looks more chocolatey to me. So we will test them both. That looks good. Wish I'd brought a spoon to make it easier to sample. All right, this is the one that doesn't look as chocolatey, but I just kind of want to see, so I'm going to put a little in this bowl. Yeah, I don't really see the chocolate in there, but I can at least check the temperature. Hmm. Oh, it's warm, and I am tasting some chocolate. That, that actually would be a good breakfast. Mmm. That's not bad. Okay. But the question is, when we decided we wanted it chocolatier and we added milk to the rest of it, let's see what that looks like. That has a much thicker ratio of chocolate to milk. Let's see what happens. No neat way to do this. Oh, yes, that looks like chocolate to me. All right, let's test that one and see if that one's, that's nice and hot. Yep, that one's better. Mm, I don't even need to add any sugar to it. The recipe says at this point, when I've added the chocolate concentrate to my milk and I'm heating it up, I can add sugar to taste if it needs more sugar. Um, but the original chocolate cake that we bought had enough sugar in it. And actually even the recipes in the 18th century to make their own um, included uh, loaf sugar. So they may have had enough sugar in theirs too, or they might have wanted to add just a little bit more. Um, so I'm not going to add any sugar because I think there's enough in there. Mmm. Yep. That's the one. That's, that, that's like a good bedtime drink. Mmm. I might not want to share that. I hope you paid attention because you're going to have to make your own now. Well, thank you for testing this recipe with me. I really enjoyed testing 1804 chocolate. Of course, I really enjoy anything with chocolate, so that wasn't really a big risk. I'm going to drink the rest of this chocolate, so if you want some, you have to make your own now. Well, if we're rolling, I should go like yes. this. Okay. okay. Why do we need a because? Chocolate. There's, that's the only thing there is to say. Does this terrify you? It's super scary. Don't know if I would be brandishing the knife if I were you. Oh, yes, more flame. <laughs> this isn't spiked.
<laughs> Just a little bit of rum in here. No, not using that one. Vitamin made a vegemin. I've got the recipe. You don't have the recipe. I've got the recipe. So why did I do it again without that tone of voice? This is amazing!